The first step when you are considering creating standards-based grading techniques in your uh, school or a reporting system is to prioritize your standards. Now, when we're talking about prioritizing standards, this is not the power standards where we're saying, what do we want to focus in on and overtly teach and assess for our student learning? The idea here is, which of these standards do I need to report out on? Which of these standards do parents need or do other school levels need to understand and get information about on a report card? Which means we need to be really in tune with why do we have a report card? But that's another video. In this case though, how do you prioritize the standards? Well, there are five ways, but a little bit of coaching first. Try not to argue over which standards are important. If you come in it with that kind of language, which of these standards are actually important? People have a lot of connections to these standards and they might have opinions where they say, well, that's a very important standard because the counter argument to that is, well, then it's an unimportant standard. So let's just cut to the chase. All the standards are important. We have cut all of the unimportant standards. We don't want to get into that. You'll lose two hours of your conversation that you'll never get back. So rather, if you start with the premise that all of the standards are important, but you want to identify why is it important. So there are five fundamental buckets that we can talk about as to why that standard may have become or identified as important. The first reason why a standard might be important is that it's an endurance standard. And that means the language of the standard as written endures. It's the language that might be seen at a fifth grade classroom and an eighth grade classroom and a high school classroom and a graduate level. So a standard like that might be evaluate your sources. All right, well, we teach students to evaluate their sources. I teach graduate school. I'm still trying to get to, uh, my students to evaluate their sources. So that's a standard that endures. The language of it endures. The second reason I might prioritize a standard is that it's a readiness standard. It's a standard that the language doesn't endure necessarily, but it's a prerequisite. Okay, so I might have a kindergarten standard that says when reading, make sure, demonstrate left to right orientation. All right, that's a prerequisite for reading. I don't have many middle school standards or high school standards that talk about left to right orientation. So that tells me this is a prerequisite, not less important. It's just why it's there is slightly different. The third reason why I might have a prioritizing of a standard would be leverage. So a leverage standard is a standard that I need to prioritize because it's a leverage point with another discipline that my students need this standard or else they will not be successful in another class. So if I am a math teacher and I have to do scientific notation and I'm sitting there going, I have no idea why I have to do scientific notation. It doesn't go with my fractions and my decimals, but here it is, a standard. But then I find out, oh, there's three units going on in the science class that require the use of scientific notation. Therefore, that standard is a leverage standard for me because they might actually fail their science class if I don't move that standard forward in an effective way. So it's a leverage standard. The fourth reason that I might prioritize a standard would be what we call teacher's choice. So a teacher's choice standard doesn't just mean, oh, I like it. What it means is because of the students I'm working with or because of the location of where I am, this standard is vital. And maybe it wouldn't be somewhere else. And maybe I can't say it's endurance or readiness or leverage, but I can say that it's necessary. So for example, I might work in an area like Greenpoint, New York which had the single largest natural disaster with petroleum uh, in the New York area. So those families are dealing with air quality, water quality, soil quality. So if I were to look through my science standards and I might see things about air quality or how to test, okay, or precautions, 
um, or what heavy metals can do, let's say, uh, in the brain of a child, then I might prioritize those standards for that group. Whereas in another school where that hasn't been a reality, it might just be covered and be passed on a test. So teacher's choice means I'm picking it because my students need me to. The fifth category is called assessment. And it doesn't mean that um, I overtly teach and assess the standard. Remember, because we have a year-long context, we've done that. We've already committed to overtly teach and get evidence of every single standard. So just because it's on a test or a project or an experience in your classroom does not mean I pick that bucket for that standard. But if I can't say it's endurance and leverage and readiness and teacher's choice, but it is on a gateway assessment, it's on a test that the child must do well on to move on, something I don't have control on, then I can say, I have to focus on this because it's on this test. We see this sometimes with certain AP standards or DP standards if you're an IB school, but we, we see this because I have to cover this, even though I can't put it into these other buckets. So this method, this prioritization of standards, is one that's been established by Tom Goodsky and Bob Marzano's team and a lot of professionals who are committed to the process of um, creating effective standards-based grading and reporting techniques. And it all starts with the prioritization of your standards.